We got dirt, we got clay. We got things blowing up. And it's all coming at you right now. Did I say truck? Well, I meant it, but not just any kind of trucks. I mean capital T-R-U-C-K-S. The monster guys. This one. Awesome, dude. Now here tonight we've got barefoot, local favorite, King Crunch. We also have Monster Patrol. We're the Grave Digger. And I'm not going to forget it. Don't you worry about that. Grave Digger himself. We also have tonight Pro Stadium Trucks. They're a blast to watch. Don't blink. They'll be by you like that. And I mentioned crashes, crashes, crashes galore. Things being crunched out there. Smashed and dirt. Cool. That's what it's all about. It's Monster Jam. to Mike Hogwood and Scott Douglas. Take it away, guys. Thanks a lot, Dan. Well, I'll tell you what, the Afterdome is rocking here tonight with this Monster Jam. I think we are going to see an exciting Monster Truck show. Hi, everybody. As Dan said, I'm Mike Hogwood, along with Scott Douglas. We'll be calling all the action for you here tonight. I really like, Scott, this course. I think it's going to be a challenge for these monster trucks. Throughout the year here on Motor Madness, we're going to see all the different courses the U.S. Hot Rod Association runs on. This is also one of my favorites. It's the longest. It's got the U-turn. They've got to have the power, and they've got to be able to handle it. All right, now we've got the big names here, the Carolina Cruncher. We've got Grave Digger. We've got Barefoot. Who else are we going to look for tonight? Anytime Tom Minson, Monster Patrol, is in the field, he's got a shot to win. And also keep your eye on Scott Stevens, a longtime veteran right here in his home state of Texas. I think he's going to come out loaded for Bear. All right, it should be a great night tonight. Now, you've already heard from Dan Moriarty. He's running all over this afternoon. Let's check in with him again now. What's up, Dan? On this show, we've got monsters, pro stadium, things like that. But in 1999, stick with us, because we're going to bring you the fattest, the baddest, the dopest kinds of trucks, squad buggies, tractors, side-by-side -side sand drag, lawnmowers. Yeah, lawnmower racing. Take a look. for our qualifying round. And a Texas native, Scott Stevens, rolling off in King Crunch in a Chevrolet. He'll be going up against Monster Patrol. He's got his uh, hands full here with Tom Mintz, doesn't he? No question. The Monster Patrol team over the last few years, the most explosive team in monster truck racing. But Scott Stevens has been there before, and he's got a bunch of fans in Houston from just down the road in Spring, Texas. All right, let's watch. See how he does. Boy, oh, it's going to be tough taking this turn. This is the key, and oh, he's up on his win. Scott Stevens has rolled over. I was just about to say the whole turn is the key. we got to see if he's all right down there, Mike. Well, the crowd on his feet here, and I'm sure folks are wondering as the uh, safety crews go over to check out now on Scott Stevens and see if he is okay. 
That turn is tight. We knew it was going to be tight, and some of these trucks are going to have trouble negotiating these turns. And it looked like he just kind of got into a slide and just went over top. The U.S. Hot Rod officials right now checking with Scott to see if he's okay. Well, we take a look at it again, and I think one of the things that is great about this sport is the safety factor. So we hope Scott's okay, but there are a lot of safety factors. No question about it. And the most important right now is the roll cage. And these roll cages are built as tough as any in motorsports because these 10,000-pound vehicles will go up on their lids, as you see right here. 10,000 pounds, 1,500 horsepower, and just could not negotiate that turn. And he's okay. Scott Stevens is out of the truck and okay, and a sigh of relief from all the folks here. Boy, I tell you what, with all his fans here, that's important. All right, uh, let's go down Dan Moriarty. He is caught up with Scott Stevens. Let's hope he's okay. Scott, you told me beforehand, sometimes when you're at home, you roll over too often. What happened? Uh, you know, our truck's just a little long for this tight track, and it just never did really get hooked up, and just had trouble making the turn. What do you say to the people from Houston who came out and said, he's our guy, he's our Texan? Uh, you know, we're still all right, the truck's all right, it seems like it's running really good. So, uh, you know, hopefully just a few minutes out the pits and change oil, and we'll be ready to come back. Back when? Oh, we'll be back next round, I hope. That's my man, thanks, Jeff. Oh, that's great news about Scott Stevens. No question, he talked about the length of the truck, and you see he actually slips off the dirt, and that can be a key. Lost contact, got onto the concrete, and over he goes. All right, Barefoot's ready to roll. It's Todd Frolic coming up, and of course, the Barefoot team out of Pontoon Beach, Illinois, the most decorated team in the history of monster truck racing. How about Executioner Mark Hall in Mark? that 97 Chevy? Mark's been around a long time. Ten years behind the wheel of the Executioner. Well, let's see what uh, the veteran driver, the executioner, has for Barefoot. We'll see how they negotiate these tight turns. Here's where Barefoot should come on. Nobody makes a stronger engine than Barefoot, and look at him explode. Boy, you can tell the horsepower there, Scott. Absolutely obvious. 572 Hemi, 1,600 horsepower, and Todd Frolic had to hammer it to beat a strong run for Mark Hall and the Executioner. The Executioner gave him a challenge there, but Barefoot absolutely with the horsepower and one of the favorites here tonight. You know, the fastest qualifier who doesn't win in this round will come back in the next round, and Mark Hall just put on a great shot, as you'll see here. He's got an opportunity, maybe, to come back in the next round. We know that Todd Frolic and Barefoot will be there because of what he does here, and that is just full boogie tilt, hammer down, and hit it. Well, you mentioned the experience. To run on a course like this, it takes some driver experience to get around. No question, and Todd Frolic's got a lot of it. All right, let's go back down to Dan Moriarty now. Todd, you're moving on. We're moving on. Hey, we were a little bit behind again. What's going on? Maybe you need to drive this dang thing. I'm telling you, you are coming up big over that last jump. Yeah, we got the horsepower, and I guess I kind of count on it once in a while. I better quit taking it for granted. We're going into the next round. Probably going to have some stiff competition. Better get after it, huh? I'm telling you, the fans love seeing you jump that last one and go sky high and take him in the air. Yeah, we're getting a lot of air out there. I'm liking the ramps. Um, I say, we're just motoring on. Keep it up, brother. Hey, we're motoring on here in Houston, Texas. Barefoot Monster Patrol looking good. We got more coming up. Still favorites here, Scott, Carolina Crusher. Gary Porter's been at this just about as long as anybody. I always say when we finally get to a Monster Truck Hall of Fame, he's one of the first guys going in, been up and down the road, and he's going up against one of the real hot newcomers, and Guy Wood, and I love this truck, the bulldozer. Guy Wood out of Blackwell, Missouri, 97 Chevy. He's ready to go, and we'll see what he has for Carolina Crusher. Again, one of those trucks that's been around for years and years, and it's certainly a threat to win here. Great mix, too, because, you know, Gary's always just had the stock Chevy looking good, and it looks like he's got a problem. I say looking good. He's broke. Bulldozer's are going to win. Well, Bulldozer with a bit of a surprise here. Guy Wood is the winner, and again, there is a problem of some sort on Carolina Crusher. And I know that uh, Gary Porter has got to be a little bit disappointed. Well, tremendously disappointed. You know, when you're talking about being in front of 52,000 fans in probably the most famous building for monster truck racing, the Houston Astrodome, Gary really wanted to show, well, he got off the line pretty well. Try to see if we can see anything go away. It's kind of funny. And yeah, he's got no momentum at that point. He did hit funny and then uh, just lost all power and uh, 
certainly disappointing here in the qualifying run. Carolina Crusher, a look again as he comes over that first row of cars and then uh, no power at all and bulldozer around the wind. Terrible break for him, but Guy Wood will take it. And Guy had a strong run going. I mean, he was going to give him all he wanted anyway. One of the new kind of trucks is interesting. you got to build a fast truck, but you want your own kind of identity. Bulldozer certainly got it. Maybe a little underpowered from some of the other trucks. Not a lot, but uh, certainly he handled well. Now let's move on. Gunslinger ready to go. Scott Martin. He's a gentleman who's been around a while and definitely can get down the track with the big boys. Maybe not one you've heard of as much as a Carolina Crusher or a Grave Digger, but he can go. How about one of the veterans, Dan Patrick? Dan Patrick always brings top equipment to every race he's at, and you got to love the muscle-bound Samson design. But, you know, I, I, this is one of the best design trucks. I love the look of so we'll see how it does against Gunslinger here. See if he's got the muscle to take on the Gunslinger. Into the turn, they look pretty even, so it's going to be horsepower to the finish. And Samson's got it. He flexes the muscle and a great run for Dan Patrick. Well, Dan Patrick is known for building those engines, and uh, he built a good one for tonight here in uh, the Afterdome in Houston. You Just know, too much power. You know when Samson shows up at an arena at an event, you are going to see the best he's got. He's always got top-line equipment. Not that uh, Gunslinger does it, but Dan Patrick really takes a lot of pride to putting a lot into it. Now, Gunslinger was in great shape here, but I think we got to a horsepower thing, Mike, as they came for home. And as we see them take the turns, I think we can see how much work the driver has to do to get around these turns, both with the front and the rear. you got to remember, there is a separate rear steer, so you've got to to move, in essence, two pieces of the truck around. It is very difficult to do. Well, Gunslinger a bit disappointed, but Samson will move on. And now, Grave Digger, one of the real favorites. You know they came to see the Digger in Houston. Pablo Huffaker, handpicked by Dennis Anderson to join the Grave Digger team. And what an outstanding talent Pablo is. He goes up against Jack Caverna, an experienced veteran, a little down in horsepower, as you'll notice, from some of the other guys. But we'll see how Cyborg does. They Grave Digger, I don't care where monster trucks run, always seems to get the loudest applause. And Grave Digger looking strong here. Grave Digger, uh, if he can just mack that throttle down here, he's got it. Grave Digger on to win here in this qualifying round, and he will advance on, and that's really no surprise. Yeah, but that was really a blowout, and I think what's interesting is how well Pablo got the first half of the course and made a great turn. All right, Dan's trying to catch up with Pablo right now. Let's go down and uh, check in with Dan Moriarty. Pablo, the Grave Digger moves on in the rounds. How you doing it? Oh, we're doing good. Track feels great out there. Um, I was a little surprised by the dirt. It's a lot tackier than I thought it would be. Um, hopefully, when we get out here and get ready to um, go in the next round, we can come out a winner and then go out there and do an awesome freestyle. I think we can ride some wheelies tonight. The fans are going nuts every time you hit the ramp. Oh, that's great. If it wasn't for all these fans out here cheering us on, I mean, it puts pressure on us because there's a lot of people up there we got to satisfy, but um, it's a good feeling to know that they're all there rooting for you. So keep on rooting for us, Digger fans. I'm sure Digger fans will. Here are the results of round one. Scott, what's the big surprise? Has to be Bulldozer beating Carolina Crusher. And even though Crusher broke, it's interesting to know that Bulldozer has the third fastest run of that round. He's for real. And we got a lot more truck action still to come here from the Astrodome in Houston, Texas. In Minneapolis, pretty good show. Jim Kohler in Avenger. David Morris in Equalizer in the qualifying round. And it was David Morris who advanced on. Moving on to round one, Brian Barthel and Little Tiger trying to upset the Grave Digger and Robert Parker. But Grave Digger would win to advance on to the finals where he would match up against the Equalizer. And David Morris has made for a great final. Scott. Heavyweight showdown. David Morris always as fast as anybody, but Robert Parker is able to get the hammer down and put the Grave Digger into the winner's circle at Minneapolis. That happened a year ago. Now, here's the freestyle. Monster Patrol can freestyle like no other. You know, as great a race team as Monster Patrol has become, they've probably become more famous. They're freestyle. It's wild. It's crazy. But it's not supposed to get this crazy. Tom Miz loses the wheel. <laughs> As the wheel's taken off, look at Tom. Are you kidding me? Tom, he's not quitting. He's going on with it. That is amazing. Hey, you want to know more about monster truck jargon? Let's get it down to our man, Dan. You know, if I just look at these guys, you know when they're working on their truck, they must have their own lingo all to themselves. It's Greek to 
to us, but they know what it means. Let's check in and find out what it all 